Hello, my name is Jasmine and I am a food writer and restaurant reviewer here in Waterloo Region. If this is your first time here, you are more than welcome. And if you've returned, thank you so much for coming back. So in this cooking video, I'm going to take us back to India and I'm going to show you how to make something that's golden, delicious, and so much better than your average onion ring. I'm going to show you how to make onion bhaji. This video is being made for my talk about Diwali for the Waterloo Public Library. If you've stumbled upon this video, no worries, I will put a link to the recipe in the description box. Now, whether you call these bhaji or pakora or whatever, these are basically vegetable fritters. In this case, these are onions in a spiced chickpea batter, which have been fried until they're crisp and golden. Now, some people, when they make them, they prefer them to be sort of cakier. So you've got that lovely crisp crunch on the outside, but inside it's just nice and soft. Me, I prefer them to be, um, the batter to be on the thinner side. So the onion shreds still hang together, um, but each slice is coated in a thin batter that uh, then gets fried into a crisp jacket. As a result, um, my bhajis can take on various appearances and I'm sure if someone uh, who is into Rorschach tests or seeing things in clouds would have a field day with what these look like. Um, but to me, they kind of look like spiders. They kind of look like multiple tentacled sea monsters. Um, and sometimes they just look like tiny little baby Cthulhu monsters just ready to be dipped into a sweet or spicy tangy sauce. Whatever they look like to you, they're easy to make and absolutely delicious. And I'm going to show you how. Now, I know you all know how to do things like sliced onions, crushed garlic, grape ginger, sliced curry leaves, minced chilies, and chopped coriander. So I'm not going to show you how to do that. Instead, we're just going to dive right in and make the bhajis. Start by heating about three or four centimeters of frying oil in a tall sided skillet or pot until it reaches about 180 C. In a small bowl, mix 3.75 mLs of salt, 2.5 mLs of turmeric, 0.62 mLs of asafoetida, that's about an eighth of a teaspoon, I think. Or you can use uh, about a teaspoon of lemon juice if you can't find asafoetida. Also add, if you want, uh, 3.75 mLs of Kashmiri chili powder, and that's to taste. And lastly, add 1.25 mLs of fennel seeds that have been chopped. In another bowl, add 60 mLs of chopped coriander, 10 mLs of minced garlic, 10 mLs of grated ginger. If you want, add some sliced curry leaves. And again, if you want, add some minced chili. Then, in a large mixing bowl, add 90 g's of chickpea flour, 40 g's of white rice flour, and the bowl of spices. Then give it a whisk to ensure everything is evenly distributed. Then add the bowl of coriander with the other fresh herbs. And again, stir it so it's evenly mixed. Then stir in 15 mLs of melted ghee or butter. And then add water a couple of tablespoons at a time and stir until the batter has the consistency of heavy cream. Lastly, add 400 g's of sliced onions and stir. Use whatever onions you happen to have on hand, but I like a mix of yellow onions for pungency and red for sweetness. 
The onions should be fully coated and the batter should neither be clumpy nor should it run off the onion pieces. So I'm just going to pause this video for a couple of moments uh, to talk to you about something that happened while I was shooting this video. Now, when I make these at home, um, I do things sort of differently. I set the pot um, on the stove and to heat the oil, and as I do, as that happens, the um, the onions get chopped, the spices get mixed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the batter is ready you know, at about the same time as the oil is or shortly thereafter. So there's not a much, there's not a lot of delay that happens between the batter being made and the bhajis uh, being fried. Um, but when I shoot these videos, I set things up so that I do all of the counter scenes, the prep scenes first. Um, and then when I'm done, I take down the lights and the cameras and the rest of it, and I move them to the stove and just reset things up there. Now, what happened this time was I did the counter scenes and I moved the equipment over, but then I realized I really should save the clips onto my laptop. And it, while that was happening, I returned some emails, had some lunch, um, and then I, you know, heated the oil because I'm not going to leave a pot of oil unattended um, for you know what could be anywhere from you know a couple of minutes to maybe a couple of hours depending on how badly things are going when I'm shooting um, so the time delay between the batter being ready and the uh, the bhajis being fried was about 30 minutes and that was about long enough for the salt to start working on the onions and leach the liquid out which made the batter much thinner than it should have been and you will see with the first bhajis that i make um you know they come they go into the uh oil and they're sort of like this and they're kind of happy and instead of sticking together they kind of go in the oil um, and you know that's okay they're still delicious you know they're still tasty um, you just have to scoop them up with your spider or your slotted spoon or whatever and um, you know treat, treat them as cooks treats why not you know you worked hard for these um, just wait for them to cool down because you know searing hot oil in your mouth is not a good thing um, but between the first and second batch, what I did to fix this was simply add more chickpea flour to the batter so it was the right consistency. And then you will see that the, um, the subsequent bhajis do hold together. Um, and I just thought it, you guys should know that just in case you wind up with too thin a batter. Okay, so we're just going to head to the stove now. And here you can see the onion whiskers floating in the oil. So as I said, call them Cook Street and eat the evidence. So when the oil reaches a temperature of 180 C, drop the bhajis into the oil one tablespoon at a time, being careful to not to overcrowd them. After a couple of minutes, turn them in the oil. And then after another couple of minutes, turn them again. The bhajis will be done when both sides are a nice coppery color, so that takes about four or five minutes. Remove them with a slotted spoon or a spider to a paper towel lined plate. Once you remove the bhajis, let the oil come back up to temp before you fry the next batch. You can make these a couple of days in advance and store them in an airtight container. When you want to eat them, put them on a cooling rack on a baking sheet and pop them into a warm oven for a few minutes to refresh and recrisp them. If you want, you can serve them with a, a dip like a tamarind chutney or a sweet coriander chutney, or you can treat them like onion rings and dip them into a spicy ketchup or a barbecue sauce if you prefer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. And until I upload the next one, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, where you can find me as Cardamom Addict. Thank you so much for watching and please remember to love your library.